Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Fen. My name's Akasha. We've had a couple of beverages, as we explained in the last video. I don't know if people. I've had the... one. He's had a few. Um, it's it's hurricane time here in Florida. We're literally locked in the house. We thought we'd do just <laughs> piss about, get pissed, and do some videos. Um, we're taking it very seriously. Anywho, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're gonna get to something that a lot of people have suggested. Um, I haven't seen this video before. However, I know who he is. I'm gonna explain a little bit. You might have seen me watching the TV a couple of times. Eight out of ten cats. Yeah. The panel show. Remember Jimmy Carr, there's three, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'll quickly explain. There is eight out of ten cats, which is a comedy panel show, okay? It's just like six comedians and then Jimmy Carr's the host, blah, blah, blah. Right. It's all just comedy and they talk about what happened in the week and, you know, they make their, you know, anecdotes or whatever. Then there's an actual TV show in the UK called, like a real life um, uh, game show called Countdown that's for old people and people just like waiting for death, right? It's all to do with like numbers and letters. It's all to do with like jumbled up letters, jumbled up numbers, and then you got to, you know, make the correct equation mm. or make the, the biggest word that you can. It's just, it's designed for old people, okay? okay. It comes on at four o'clock in the afternoon. The oldies love it. Someone at Channel 4 in the UK decided to put the two shows together, right? Which probably sounds like, I don't know, man, like a late night, you know, kind of out there, edgy, sweary show with an old... But actually, it works brilliantly. Anyway, long story short, in that show, in the 8 out of 10 Cats, when they brought it together with Countdown, there is a gentleman who recently passed away, a legend of the game, Sean Locke. Yeah. Okay. I, I heard of that. I remember because I, yeah. I mentioned it to you because that's quite. I was like, "Oh no, Sean Locke passed away." Yeah, you're now, sad. Here's the thing. I'm going to divide the audience right now about this, but uh, as you know, Your I favorite don't. Thing to I, do. I, that's my favorite, and I don't <laughs> care. I'm a humongous, a humongous, humongous fan of stand-up comedy, as you know. Right. Right. I watch everything from the lower levels to open mic nights, the big ones. The truth is this, and the Brits won't like this. When it comes to hardcore, hard-hitting stand-up comedy. The Americans do it better, okay? Now, the people on 8 out of 10 cats, like your John uh, Richardson, Jimmy Carr, they're all good, okay? But even though, they're even though they're supposedly, like, pushing the boundary, they don't really. Right. Okay, there's some things in the UK, like, you can't be anti-establishment in the UK. If you're right-wing-leaning whatsoever... You're axed out, okay? And I, I mean, I could really. This needs like a podcast to explain what I'm kind of trying to trying to say. But yeah. they, they are the UK is more. Uh, they p cross the line with the kind of like the crude jokes, like sexual jokes or whatever. But when it comes but to not like the real shit, not the real important like politics, they don't go there. Whereas Americans, do they talk like, about like trans and stuff? That's or? what I mean. Nothing like okay. that. They keep away from that. So in America, you got your Bill Burrs, your Louis C.K.s. If you really, really understand comedy, you got people like. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, Bobby Lee and uh, uh, Robert Kelly and uh, Rich Voss and my favorite comedian of all time is Patrice, Patrice O'Neill, the king, as far as I'm concerned. When you really understand stand-up com comedy, these guys, it's another level. Right. Having said that, Sean Locke is one of the geniuses of British comedy. He's one of like... Did he like push... He definitely did. I never did, watched this But thing. also that whole British dry kind of, you know, um, what's the word? I'm, there's a word I'm looking for. Um, he, he does whatever the Brits do best. He's one of the best at it as far right. as I'm concerned. Okay. There was another one of my favorites was, not anymore, Frankie Boyle. We'll, we'll probably do some reactions to him as well. Did at he one, pass once upon away a time. No, he just, like just kind of turned a bit wokey and annoying. <laughs> anyway, that's for another time. But Sean Locke, for me, up there in the top three four british comedians of all time because not only will he push it but also just as random this actually makes him hilarious so mm -hmm. we're gonna watch sean Locke's best bits okay uh rest in peace sean Locke, legend okay. shall we yeah about it i think it's gonna be popular with not just kids but with their parents as well and uh, i've sort of reworked an old classic and it is the tiger who came for a pint <laughs> <laughs> It's a lovely story. It mixes up two of my favourite things, which is uh, tigers and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll read the story to you now. I've got to use Susie's pen cam. The tiger who came for a pint. There, there was once a tiger who fancied a pint. 
Not Carling, of course. That was too weak and too gassy. <laughs> he wanted a pint that packs a punch like Stella or Cronenberg. <laughs> Just random. and needed something to wash down the zookeeper he'd just eaten. <laughs> he liked the atmosphere he made this. Spoons. Plus, plus, he was barred from the king's head for mauling the darts team. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like a children's book. <laughs> Tiger drank his pint quietly beside the quiz machine. Soon, what with the beer, fags and flame-grilled McCoys, <laughs> he spent all his money, <laughs> but he didn't half have a thirst on. <laughs> so when George went to the cellar to flush out the strongbow line, <laughs> the tiger drank all the beer from all the kegs and all the rum they were saving for Caribbean night. <laughs> <laughs> then he ate the meat raffle. <laughs> Naughty tiger. <laughs> then he went to toilet on the bar. This going to sell millions. We're going to have to call you a mini cab home, tiger, said George, the deputy manager, bursting from the cellar. Where do you want taking? To the zoo, you silly bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> so George, the deputy manager, called the tiger a cab. <laughs> It took a while to get one because the first two drivers they sent said, Are you mental? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Pavel from Station Cars agreed to do <laughs> The journey went smoothly and eventually, after a lot of questioning, the tiger said, Look, for the last time, it's not a onesie. <laughs> Spoons deputy manager George a never pub. saw the tiger or Pavel, the station's car's driver, ever mm. again. <laughs> yeah. The end. <laughs> he would have made that and made all the drawings and everything. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. <laughs> this is pretty legendary. In, yeah. Oh my god, no, Sean. You don't want to ruin it. Oh, sorry. It's an incredible game. Okay. John and Sean, this is a bluffing game. John, in front of you, there is a red box. Sean, in front of you, there is a gold box. There's a carrot in one of these boxes. I know, it's exciting stuff. <laughs> the aim of the game is to end up with the Do you guys have this game? game Carrot in a box? box? When do we do the conundrum? <laughs> Sean stands still, let's find John, you want a carrot? Sean, you want a carrot. But there is only one carrot. Let's play. It's a brilliant game. It's terrible. Shush. Stop ruining Christmas! Why are you ruining Christmas? I'm not ruining Christmas! Well, you this are! Is, this is ruining Christmas! <laughs> you his little face, he's excited about playing! You've got to ruin it for everyone! Yeah, I can't wait to win this carrot. <laughs> okay, let's play. Carrot in a box. <laughs> Okay, Sean, you can look inside your box. John, you cannot look inside your box. Okay, you want the carrot, Sean. And no, 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 don't, don't, don't put no hands in the box. You can look inside the box. Have you looked? Have you seen? Yeah. Okay, you now have to convince John to swap his box if you think he has the carrot or keep your box. It's a game of bluff. The winner yeah. is the one with the carrot. Oh, I, I'm, I'll, I'll keep this. <laughs> It's a real quandary for me. <laughs> <laughs> you can choose a 
him. No, yeah, he's allowed to yeah. swap if he wants no, to I swap. Can't, can't I just keep my book? <laughs> Swap if you want well, to swap. refuse to swap it. No. <laughs> you make somebody swap something, they want to swap it. <laughs> have you never played Carry in a Box before? You never, have you ever seen the show? I must it's have been a holiday. I must have been a holiday that <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to keep your box or swap your box? I can keep this or I can have the box that's definitely got a carrot. <laughs> yes. I want Sean's box. Okay, we'll grab Sean's box. Sean, <laughs> let go of the box. It's the nature of the game. It's the nature of the game. Can I just say at this point, if there's no carrot in that box, you are a genius. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's swap boxes, swap boxes. But am I allowed swap the boxes? Swap. Am I allowed to have my box back? Is there another round where I get to have the box with the carrot in back? <laughs> I'm going to level with you, fellas. We've never played this game before. <laughs> we do not know how it ends. OK, so, John, you're now allowed to look in your box. Right. And, and I believe you can reveal... Point it the other way. Does it contain a carrot or not? No. I knew it! <laughs> yes! Round of applause. Round of applause. <laughs> That's so good. I knew it. That is experience. Yeah. Oh, because they're both brilliant, you know, but comedians But he's just like, right. but hit the, what's supposed to be funny is like, I'll quick. just keep it. He was yeah. so quick. He right. was well ahead of everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had me the first he time I saw that. He got everybody fooled, yeah. I'm going to go and sit down now and think about what we've done. <laughs> <laughs> if you could bring something extinct back to life, what would it be? Well, hmm. glad you asked me, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> First off, I thought, oh, I'd like to do Jurassic Park to make it safe. I'd take all their teeth and nails out. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex with no teeth, it'd just be like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> 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 I had a brilliant idea. If I could reanimate something, I'd reanimate all the leaders of the Nazi party, all the top Nazis. This is what I mean. He's willing to yeah, go there. Yeah, to go there, yeah. You know what I mean? The rest of the, You can see, look, see her face. Yeah. She's supposedly a comedian. I can't remember her name. She's all right. Like, they're all all right. Right. But she's like, oh, God, he's going to go there. Right. I'm going to want to go back. What did, he, what did he open up with? All the leaders of the Nazi party. Look at her face. All the top Nazis. Just leave it there. So he said it himself that's in his career, right. see you later. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Rasheen, would you say you, you, you've got a broad... No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got... I like putting them all on an island. Sorry, who? Put all the Nazis, the top Nazis. <laughs> put them on an island and then film it. Oh. And people would love that, wouldn't it? And you go like, oh, Goebbels hasn't caught any fish today. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler's very hungry. <laughs> Yeah. If anything, it got worse after I stopped you. <laughs> <laughs> it got so much worse. Now, Goebbels, you said, want to send him fishing on a desert island. I want to take the Nazis, I want to reanimate them and put them in paradise. <laughs> no, they don't get any supplies. They've got to fend for themselves. Has, he, has this show got a name? Yeah, Nazi Island. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rachel, you must get recognised by your fans all the time. Do you ever wish you could sort of fly under the radar? Um, my favourite time of the year is when I just get to go skiing. And you haven't got to do your hair and makeup. You haven't got to have all that awkwardness. Just put your helmet on, put your snood on, no makeup. It's great. And actually, I've brought my skiing stuff with Let's me, actually. If I just make See, myself more I'm, comfortable. I'm pretty sure I would recognise um, you in skiing gear. So I've got um, a beard and uh, Viking horns. <laughs> and um, this is kind of my look. So much more comfortable and it's warm and um you just don't have to have that awkward social like uh, is that you is it not how's how's jimmy that kind of thing that's a challenging wank <laughs> brilliant <laughs> that's a challenging wank it really is sean 
Because <laughs> she's like the show hottie. Yes, you know I got I mean? it. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, Sean, biggest achievement in life? Well, I think the money I embezzled from the RLLI. <laughs> That feels like something I could be interested in. Yeah. Well, that time I went seal clubbing. <laughs> they said... Seal they clubbing. Said They've never... <laughs> I <laughs> thought, like, clubbing, like... Mm, no, mm. no, seal clubbing. Clubbing <gasps> the sea. <laughs> and then it hit me. I was like, wait, what does he mean? And the RLLI, if I remember correctly, is... Uh, it's the... Ch- oh, hang on. Let me... Let me, uh, let me get there. See anything like it. I said, it was like a trolley dash. <laughs> they said that, did they? Yeah. I had two hammers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hot nail boots. I was doing four at once. <laughs> four. My greatest achievement must be rectum of the year. <laughs> not, not rear of the year. Not, no, it's different. Yeah. This is rear of the year with the gloves off. <laughs> <laughs> rectum of the year. I knew I'd won when I. Uh, I heard three of the judges throwing up behind me. <laughs> I thought, I've got, I've got this in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> throwing sure. up behind me. I beat Fern Cotton. I beat Fern Cotton. Fern Cotton is like a, um, like a British TV celebrity. Okay. She's semi-hot. <laughs> yeah, hers. Let me tell you, hers is pretty messed up. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, of course, that got, that got me through to the world. So I got to the, went to the world finals in Cancun. Cancun. I, I thought I was going to win. I thought I'm going to win this. But then Diego Maradona beat me. <laughs> Ooh, when he bent over, set the sprinklers off. <laughs> Do you want to play along for fun, sort of personal battle between no, us? No, fine, fine, fine. You could play for Claw. <laughs> why, why would I do that? So I've already got him. <laughs> Just check. Uh, I've already got him. <laughs> What's in it for me? Um, my pen. I don't think that's enough. <laughs> I've left the lid off this, but it's actually a stuffed grizzly. <laughs> <laughs> It's impractical, but uh, as an ornament, it really serves its purpose. <laughs> so, are you are you playing along with Miles Side for fun? Bet, but not for Claude, no. <laughs> oh right. Oh, f- money, a grand. Tell you what. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't spit on you when we're having sex tonight. <laughs> Good luck trying it without a spit. <laughs> 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 I'm wiping the tear up. <laughs> oh, Sean's just very kindly offered not to spill one of our guests. <laughs> <laughs> I won't spit on you having sex. <laughs> your obituary to say? I don't care. I'll be dead. <laughs> Solid point, though. Well, ideally, I'd like it just to say, no! <laughs> Why? No! Ah! <laughs> you can't write tears, Jimmy. 63, 2021. How old was it, is that? Oh, um... How old is that? Uh, 1963, 37, 57, 58. 58. Yeah, 58, so... Young. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But uh, while I was watching him there, I just thought if there's any... You know, because we do have a bit of an American audience, I think the best way to describe Sean Locke is his hour... Do you know who Norm MacDonald is? Part of the name, but... Just that kind of comedy, just the, the just a, always a step ahead of everybody else. That's what Norm Macdonald was, and I think that's what Sean Locke was as well. So, um, yeah, man, good. Yeah. 
we'll uh, maybe do some more like of because uh, I-, I love a uh, British comedy like panel shows like that I like and they're easy watching you know when you're at home like you know when you're just like at home gonna have some food like they're just good to put on the TV do you know what I mean mm-hmm. Um, so you're never going to be like laughing like oh my god hysterically that's what I meant earlier by my earlier comments is like there's comedians in America that leave me like literally I can't breathe yeah. but Sean Locke is one of those that has left me in stitches yeah. like has left me in stitches and like I say always a step ahead of everybody else but um, yeah sad but uh, anything you want to add? nope is that good? Mm-hmm. awesome don't forget to like comment subscribe Check out our Instagram at Culture Clash Reaction. Sorry, that's, the wine's hitting. That's your The Pinot page. is hitting, baby. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, okay. Sean, wherever you are, mate, thanks for the laughs. Till next time. See you later.